Can you share personal photos online without sharing your face with the giant global database that is the internet? Welcome to Tech First with John Kutz here. Every time you share a photo online, you, in a sense, lose control over it. Uh, algorithms and AI grab it, they judge it, they sort it. That might be pretty innocuous. That might be just ensuring that it's not a pornographic image that you're uploading to Facebook, for instance. But it also might be putting you into a global face recognition database. Writer AI says they have a solution to that. To learn more, we're chatting with Marion Glazer, who's a CEO and founder of Brighter AI. Marion, welcome. Yes, good to be here. Excellent. We tried to do this like a week and a half ago, and my internet totally failed, so I apologize for that. Now we're on and we're live. Thank you for coming again. Let's start here, Marion. What's the problem? Why should we be concerned about the photos we share? Yeah, you, you already picked it up a little bit, um, but I think it's um, uh, uh, if you think about it deeply, it's it's, it's more crucial. So um, we have uh, um, uh, not just smartphones, but um, um, with with high um, digital uh, cameras and uh, quite a bit of quality, but also public cameras or uh, or cameras. Uh, that you don't even know that you're being captured from someone that takes a group picture, for example. And all these images, um, uh, uh, they can be analysis, um, analyzed for any kind of face and anything that is in there um, and basically stored, collected, and matched. Um, which means that even without your knowledge being maybe captured on the street from someone, maybe even in the back of the selfie of the other person, mm -hmm. um, this image that you're not aware about uh, ends up uh, um, um, maybe online, is uh, um, being crawled, and then can be used to check this picture of you in the back of someone's selfie and directly um, link it to your social profile or yeah. to link it to LinkedIn. Um, there was something very scary that I saw, that's, that's uh, one, one uh, uh, example. Somebody took a picture, um, um, basically a bit hiddenly, um, of a person sitting in a bar, and this person in the bar wasn't aware of it, and he checked directly through a platform, um, what's this person, and what's the LinkedIn profile of that, and checked the profile even before uh, um, this, this person uh, was talked to, and that's quite scary. It is potentially scary. I mean, it has a lot of implications. It could be as simple as somebody taking a look, but it could be a government agency. It could be some foreign country. Exactly. It could be a company uh, looking for you in an automated way. Is this a high net worth individual? Should we pay attention to him or her when they walk through the front door or something like that? Very, very interesting. So for some people, their solution is they don't share anything and maybe they wear a hoodie or a hat all the time. Who knows? Others share without even thinking about it. What's your solution? So our solution is that um, we see that not like saying to not share will not happen because people like to share what they do. And it's good, especially, as you said, uh, political uh, um, 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 like or law enforcement misusing it. There are moments, for example, in demonstrations where you want to share what is going on in the world. You're going out on the street to protest for uh, um, um, and have the freedom of speech. And you want to share that. And you should you, sh you should have the right and should not be um, uh, limited um, um, uh, uh, by anything. So. Mm -hmm. um, what we see is that there are current solution to maybe pixelize a face or maybe put an emoji on top of the face. But this essentially changes the emotion of the, uh, uh, of the uh, uh, scene. As you see here in this uh, uh, nice video, um, you, you're having all those different people um, and they sc scream into the camera, they stand up for their rights and um, uh, uh, this, basically matters in their face to to express what is going on mm -hmm. so um our approach is and um and thanks for showing it actually again uh we extract the original faces and replace them with um new faces that are non-trackable to the original one so they are, are dif different from the original and if this person um was on a demonstration um, this picture will not help anyone, not uh, neither the law enforcement or for misuse, uh, um, if you're not in a, a democratic country or anywhere, to use this image against you. Um, and How does that, that work? That's... How does that work? I mean, because are, are, are you totally replacing the faces? Are you, are you making some tiny changes to them so that an algorithm, an AI can't um, see exactly what they are? What are you doing exactly to them? 
Yeah, um, it's a good question because there's one approach where you only change like slight pixels um, and then you try to fool facial recognition. Um, what we see in research and uh, um, uh, also in own development, that's a cat and mouse game. So you're changing kind of like a couple of pixels, you fool one detector, one algorithm, and there's a new algorithm and that works again. So mm -hmm. our approach is different. As you said, we're changing the entire face. So we, we would take your face, for example, um, and modulate with the same age and gender and ethnicity a new face, which would be not yours. It would be basically an artificial person's face um, and therefore not be um, uh, um, uh, recognizable and trackable. And the, 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 the advantage of that is that since it's a different face, the better facial recognition algorithms become, the different face will tell them, oh, this is clearly not the same person. This is clearly not John, because <laughs> the facial recognition is even more fooled by our entirely new face. That is really, really interesting. I mean, and it, it brings up all kinds of questions, right? I mean, who is actually there? Is this photo real? Is this historical? Who can take real photos of historical things? Are, are the rest of us just taking random pictures that, that you know, are, are essentially faked? Um, you know, there's, there's lots of questions that that brings up. Yes, uh, uh, definitely. Um, I mean, essentially, as you say, we're, we're changing the original material. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so we we do feel um, um, publicating those images um, should be marked with okay here are protected faces um, one hand they are protected because we 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 want to encourage that and on the other hand it's not the original faces to to say okay this is altered material and this is uh, uh, in a way then bridging the gap of having. Um, on one hand, the, or, uh, the the material, the photos online, and share them with uh, with those kind of emotions, um, and compensate um, um, uh, that that the material is not actually real, with the huge advantage of data privacy and protecting those those people. So a couple of questions that come up, and and we're going to get into the questions around. I want to share pictures of myself. Uh, maybe my family or something like that. And I want to do that in a privacy safe way. But um, maybe even even before we do that, how does this work technically? Where are you getting the faces that you are mapping onto people's bodies? It's a bit magic. That's what, <laughs> I don't believe that. that. <laughs> that, that, that that's, that's what our investors say. It's magic. Um, no, but it's- uh, I it, want it, those it, investors, if they believe in magic, I've got a, I've got a bunch of startups for them. Hopefully they got a few <laughs> billion dollars to spare. <laughs> um, um, yeah, so uh, and, 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 and jokes aside, but um, uh, in, in fact, we having a deep neural network, it's a generative deep neural network that truly generates a new face without having any additional information, except for what is the target age, gender, ethnicity, and um, um, uh, basically the mimics of the person. So there is no 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 face before. It's uh, uh, the face that we generate has not been there before. It's uh, out of a combination of data, newly generated. And um, uh, it, it's funny about uh, deep neural networks is as they uh, as they use those information and then create something from uh, from you, um, uh, uh, even even uh, uh, basically trying to uh, to to go in there uh, is kind of magical because it's happening within the neural network. So mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's actually really interesting what you said there. What I heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that um, perhaps you have a 35 ish. Um, female Asian woman in the picture, and you're going to generate a face that is uh, along those lines, right? And maybe there's a, a 45 year old Caucasian male, or maybe there's a 20 year old black uh, woman. You're gonna generate a face that fits those general characteristics, but is not the exact person that was there. Is that correct? Is that what I heard? Uh, 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 that is correct. Interesting, That's correct. interesting. Yes. Okay, and and uh, um, and in order uh, just to add on that, um, in order to avoid biases, like um, 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 uh, like uh, you you might have for ethnicity that it that it can be um, um, uh, not as clear, right? And we also don't want to basically 
create something that wasn't there before just mm -hmm. by doing a wrong interpretation, right? We, we don't want to, to, to make someone Asian, even though he isn't, uh, um, because of some side effects. Yes. So um, in, in fact, and that's a critical question. Um, um, in fact, what we do is um, we take the, um, uh, the input of the original uh, image, including the bias, and we incorporate this in the output, which means that we, we are just recreating the same kind of uncertainty with the same kind of uh, um, a, a basically um, yeah, appearance towards the new face. Which wow. means that if if it's before um, a kind of like not clear Asian, not clear European, because it's it's just the way it is, then mm. this appearance will be very similar to that as well. This is interesting. This is this is uh, more challenging stuff than I thought, and all kinds of questions <laughs> that it raises. Obviously, I, I'll I'll turn to the personal question. Um, I want to share sure. a picture of myself. Um, it's the selfie, right? Uh, we went out to hike the mountain. And there we go. Uh, maybe it's my family. Maybe it's my kids. Other things like that. How do I do that and have it be privacy safe? Um, and, and yet not <laughs> be sharing pictures of somebody else <laughs> who doesn't exist. Yes. Um, it's, it's, uh, um, with every technology that come, come certain risk. Um, and, um, uh, we, uh, we basically watermark images that they have synthetic places uh, or synthetic faces to avoid this misuse. We enable the user on own risk to disable it, but this is then clear violation of a moral uh, um, a codex, uh, I would say, if you, um, but this is also not something that is really new. Um, because also with Photoshop, even before, if you want to really fake something, you you are even without our tool able to to kind of like fake a selfie and try to to make their yeah. something new yeah, out of it. Yeah, that's not exactly what I'm asking. What I'm what I'm asking is, I go somewhere, I take a picture of myself and my family. Yeah. I want to share to my friends and to my yeah. family via some social platform. And yeah. I want them to know, yeah, this is me. <laughs> and I was here. I climbed Mount Everest or wherever we are. And 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 here's the picture of me. And I'm wondering mm. if your technology can allow me to do that in a yeah. privacy safe way, maybe changing some of the pixels or something like mm. that, enough mm. so that uh, an AI algorithm that, that, that looks at it can't necessarily match mm. me up with my LinkedIn mm. profile mm. or whatever mm. else. Mm. But... My friends and family know, yeah, yeah, that's John. That, yeah, that's what he mm. looks like. And that's yeah, yeah. actually at the summit of Everest. Mm. Um, you know, uh, can you do that? Yeah, um, uh, uh, no, uh, uh, intentionally. So um, uh, the, the, the bit of the uh, um, cat and mouse game um, of changing just a few pixel, um, we are not, uh, we're not doing this uh, uh, for your own safety. Um, okay. Because if we, would, if we would claim, okay, we change a couple of pixel, this might work at the current state. But this photo will stay online. So if we only change uh, a couple of uh, 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 pixel so that your friends still know that you're John, um, we are risking actually that you feel, oh, this is protected. Uh, yes. uh, but the new next algorithm comes along and it's not protected yes. anymore. So yes. this is why we, we why we don't want to do this. And from from the research shown, those those micro changes they will end up in a in a uh, in a in a, in a loop that you cannot really break. So we're we're saying we're changing the entire face. But here's what you can do. Uh, um, so uh, we're having an app in the pipeline um, uh, to take a selfie. You you decide, okay, I share it responsibly with only some people, and you can then select the people in the back, for example, to to have a replaced face. And mm -hmm. you can say, okay, for this certain platform, um, um, it's more about the moment and it's more about uh, 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 something. And people actually know that it's me. Uh, I just replaced myself for that one as well. <laughs> um, so to give you basically the freedom to select uh, uh, yourself or select the people on the back, and then in the end, it's your choice who to share it with. Okay. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So how do people use your service and, and, and where do you see that going? Do you see yourself being in the camera app at some point or, or how, what, what do people need to do to use your service? So um, as of right now, um, we launch it as a web tool. So you can uh, um, uh, open it on a browser, have, for example, from uh, right now targeting mostly group images. So maybe you, you come home from an, um, 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 a big event, you have 20 photos, you check them, you want to upload some. So um, uh, use, the, use that as a web browsing uh, um, a platform and also a bit of uh, um, support with for mobile app to just uh, uh, test it uh, uh, and do it as well. Um, so as a mobile application. 
But we see, as you say, and as I, as I mentioned, we have in the, in the pipeline an app so that you can use it directly on your phone, take a picture wherever you want, select the faces that should be protected, uh, and then share it wherever you want. And this is where we see the future of any kind of data protection like that to keep it as close to the original um, uh, capturing. Because even after you took, captured the picture, it's being already uploaded to your iCloud. It's being, uh, yes. maybe use a filter and it's being uploaded to Instagram. So to really have on the device, the first level of safety and then uh, uh, give the user the uh, ability to protect those faces. Very, very interesting things. Uh, so at some point, perhaps you could see a uh, a deal with maybe somebody like uh, Google or an Apple even to be an option, perhaps in the the default camera. Um, uh, uh, let's say our uh, investors think it's magic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> very good. Well, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been very, very interesting. John, it was great having you. Great questions, and um, yeah, happy to be here. Excellent. For everybody else, thank you for joining us on Tech First. My name, of course, is John Kutsir. I appreciate you joining the show. Uh, this podcast will be live today or tomorrow. Uh, search for Tech First and all the major platforms. You'll be able to get a full transcript as well in about a week or sometimes two, three days at johnkutsir.com. And the full story at Forbes comes out right after that. Plus, of course, the video will remain available on my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining. Until next time, this is John Kutsir with Tech First.